Bitcoin specifically, we got involved when it was a six billion dollar market cap, and here's Art Laffer again in in my life and in Ark's life. Uh, it was a six billion dollar cap then. Now it's over a trillion, which is but. We were asking the question, this was 2015, could Bitcoin serve the three roles of money? And we came to the conclusion that it was possible. Art Laffer collaborated, he tore our original paper up, and as we were going through it, I he said, this is the first, this is the rules-based monetar monetary system I've been waiting for since uh, we left the gold exchange standard, 71, 1971. Right. And I said to him, oh, how big could this be? And he said, well, how big is the U.S. monetary base? And back then, remember, this is a six billion dollar cap. Back then it was a four and a half trillion dollar monetary base. Today we're at eight and a half trillion. Uh, and, and Bitcoin's at one trillion. And that's, uh, that's just one of its roles, one of its roles. I think the See, most fascinating thing that's happening is in El Salvador. Have you heard they deemed Bitcoin, the president who right. tweets every day, deemed Bitcoin legal tender and sent a Chivo wallet uh, to every everyone uh, in the population eligible, so four million, three million. It had thirty dollars worth of Bitcoin in it. Three million have t have downloaded it. Only one point two million in that country uh, have a banking relationship. So this is the new bank, digital wallets, and it's going to be true in this country. It's going to be true around the world. So all in. All in. We are seeking the truth as these new, new technologies evolve, all of them at the same time, right. and cause like a lot of chaos, a lot of confusion, a lot of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt in our markets. And uh, we're trying to allocate capital to its highest and best use, do the right thing. And one of the reasons people thought we were going to fail is here, we chose a wrapper that was dominated by passive portfolios right. and put an active strategy in there. And people thought that was crazy. Now, after two and a half years of no traction, effectively, um, I began to say, wow, was that a bad, was that a bad move? And so we, did, we started doing separate, separately managed accounts and so forth. But it turns out that that was a great decision because so many people thought it was such an awful decision. Right. We had so much visibility. When the inflows started, it was like a head fake and you know, it got us so much more attention than we would have gotten otherwise. Too volatile, that, that, that was the pitch. I mean, that was the response, too volatile. We couldn't possibly do that. And here we are, we are a volatile strategy. Right. Uh, and our, our, our response was, well, volatility on the upside is not a bad thing. Right. And last year was a, a good example of that. The right. other thing we said at the time, and, and we actually took our cues from a value investor who said to us, I would never buy one stock in your portfolio, but I like your research and you might be right. So I'm going to just put 5%. This is a value investor, 5% as a hedge. And uh, as did our first in institutional best, uh, investor, um, which is value oriented, right. uh, and kind of thought we were behaving like a value manager, long term time horizon, and looking for extreme values. Well, value investors are using price to book and, and dividend yield and that sort of thing. We're using growth. You know, we're using spectacular growth rates that no one is expecting. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. And Tesla was our first uh, proof of concept, I would say, a very right. visible one, where people were saying, what are they talking about? And all we had done was uh, use Wright's Law, which is the centerpiece of our, our research, to try and figure out how quickly costs would decline uh, in battery pack systems, how much prices would fall for electric vehicles, and how quickly the uptake would be. And we saw Elon Musk, magnificent things happening in Tesla. But it wasn't so easy to be invested in Tesla early on. For us, it was easy. 
Tesla's battery technology mm -hmm. is unlike any other auto manufacturer's uh, uh, battery technology. Tesla was riding down the cost curve of the consumer electronics industry. So laptops, cell phones, huge volumes, right? And when you get a scaling like that, costs come down. It's called a learning curve in the, in the tech industry. So Elon, you had auto manufacturers and uh, auto analysts laughing at him. Elon is building his car on top of cell phone batteries. Isn't that funny? Our first move away from China was when China was, uh, you know, had a very strong move, and what you know, the innovation there was being deeply appreciated while right. ours was not. So that was that kind of move. The second time we moved in, or the, then we moved in, why? We saw the reaction to COVID and we got more interested because it was the most disciplined country in terms of both monetary and fiscal policy during the crisis. And I thought that China had the possibility of uh, becoming the Germany and Switzerland uh, of the world, you know, in terms of discipline, monetary, fiscal. Um, as soon as Jack Ma was banished, effectively, right. last November, uh, we started pulling back. Because what we're doing, and especially during February through May, where our strategy, just to give you a sense how volatile that is, our strategy from mid-February through mid-May, most people wouldn't admit this maybe, but this, this is, is how volatile Transpar we are. Yeah. Transparency uh, was down 37%, peak to trough. Uh, so we have come back, but um, uh, during that period, what we do, as we always do, we concentrated our portfolio towards our highest conviction names. China was moving away because almost every week and month there was a new regulatory move right. or crackdown. So it was easy to do that. It was great because I'm always scrambling, looking for cash during a correction. Okay, where's the confidence lower? Now, common prosperity. So what have we done? No China in our flagship. Uh, we do own some China in um, a few of our portfolios, the ones uh, focused on auto uh, autonomous uh, 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 te technology and robotics. Uh, but we're very particular, very low margin companies because margin is clearly not appreciated by the government anymore, common prosperity. Right. There are the haves and the have nots in China like, like there is around the world. Uh, I think China's taking it more seriously because there's probably more social unrest than we now appreciate. What I don't understand is they're going after real estate, which is 75% of the consumer savings in China. Individuals now, in China. And if if yes individual saving if if the the prices are going down which they have been um i think that could really hurt uh consumer confidence i think it already is and then last weekend or the weekend before government the national government went after the regulators regulators who had focused on the financial industry as well as the financial institutions and i'm just saying wow they're playing with fire it's a moving yeah and talk about a cyclical risk out there. Think about that if we lose China. At the margin, China has been responsible for a tremendous amount of cyclical growth. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. 
They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.